Now we're going to look at how to treat arrhythmia mechanisms from sort of a conceptual standpoint. And recall that we talked about three mechanisms of tachyarrhythmias, enhanced automaticity, reentry, and triggered activity. So how do we deal with each of these different type of rhythm problems? How do we make them go away? So treating enhanced automaticity, shown here on the right, is a sort of a standard automatic rhythm. And there are really three ways that we can treat them. So the first is to make the maximum diastolic potential more negative. That is to say, hyperpolarize the membrane potential. So that it takes longer for that phase four depolarization to hit threshold. The second way is to reduce the slope of phase four depolarization um, so that it takes longer again for the uh, action potential to hit threshold. And finally, uh, you can make the threshold potential more positive. You can say, move the threshold potential from negative 65 millivolts to negative 45 millivolts and again make it longer or make it take longer for phase four to um, occur. How do you treat reentry? Well there are a couple different strategies but the main idea is to disrupt the balance that finely tuned balance between the fast and the slow pathway in order to um, take away the reentrant physiology. So for example you could slow the slow conduction even more so that um, there is no conduction at all and there's block into the slow pathway. Or an alternative strategy, for example, is to suppress the premature beats uh, which are occurring, which often can set up um, that slow, fast uh, conduction, that finely tuned balance in the first place. So that's treating reentry. Treating triggered activity, even though it would be sort of elegant to address the underlying calcium channel abnormalities and in point of fact in practice that's not actually how we uh, deal with triggered activity rather uh, than sort of directly addressing the calcium handling abnormalities what we do is modify the milieu modify the electrophysiological milieu that allows um, these uh, calcium abnormalities to manifest so for early after depolarizations uh, which depend on a long QT interval what we do is address the prolonged QT interval, do things to shorten the QT interval, which we'll talk about, and to address delayed after depolarizations, which are often dependent on high intracellular calcium levels uh, associated with digoxin toxicity. What we do is we fix the digoxin toxicity to take away sort of the p potential for these delayed after depolarizations to occur. So treating triggered activity, we try to modify the electrophysiologic milieu. So that's kind of a conceptual basis of how to treat arrhythmia mechanisms. Now what we're going to do is talk about um, sort of specific indications for drug therapy. Not every um, electrophysiologic abnormality is amenable to drug therapy, so it's important to kind of cone down on the ones that actually uh, drug therapy can be useful for. And here's the general rationale again. So basically the idea with using drugs is that you have an abnormal electrical substrate uh, which leads to one of the particular arrhythmia mechanisms, and uh, that leads to an arrhythmia. So if you can alter the cardiac electrical properties, that is to say either attack the arrhythmia mechanism directly or uh, remove the sort of electrophysiologic milieu that allows that arrhythmia mechanism to ensue, then you can abolish the arrhythmia mechanism and uh, everything's good. But in reality, whenever we alter the cardiac electrical properties, not only do we ameliorate certain arrhythmia mechanisms, but we have the potential for establishing other pro conditions. So in a very real way, the drugs that we're going to be talking about now are double-edged swords, and it reinforces the concept of sort of first do no harm. You really have to know how to use them in order to, to make sure that you're helping uh, your patient and not hurting them. So this is just sort of a cautionary tale in medicine. There are a lot of trials like this uh, where we sort of have a rational basis for doing things and we think that we know um, sort of uh, by predicting from our models what will occur if we uh, undertake a certain in intervention with a drug. Uh, but we have to balance that against empiricism and empiric data from clinical trials always trumps are sort of theoretical models. So shown here is data from the cardiac arrhythmia suppression trial, the CAST trial, which was a landmark trial in the 1980s, uh, testing flecainide against placebo. 
Now, flecainide, we're going to learn, is useful in treating ventricular arrhythmias. And uh, in patients after uh, having had a heart attack, there are a lot of ventricular arrhythmias. You can have premature ventricular contractions, which then can lead to ventricular tachycardia, which is not good because um, your blood pressure drops and you can die from it. So the idea behind the CAST trial was by suppressing premature ventricular contractions or PVCs, which flecainide does a good job of, uh, we could improve survival by preventing uh, patients from degenerating into rhythms incompatible with life like ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. But uh, <clears throat> in looking at the data, it actually turns out that flecainide um, harmed people. The placebo arm did better than the flecainide arm. So um, even though there was a really good theoretical reason to test the hypothesis, in the end, empiricism uh, trumps uh, rationalism. So what are the indications for antiarrhythmic drug therapy? What kind of rhythm disturbances is this um, type of approach useful for? Well, uh, I've grouped it into sort of three big picture categories. So the first is for disruption of certain reentrant uh, supraventricular tachycardias, that is to say atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia and AV uh, reentrant tachycardia. Treatment of atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter and a related rhythm abnormality, atrial tachycardia. And there are two major strategies that we uh, use for this, which we'll go into in the next slide, rate control and rhythm control. And finally, the third major indication for using drugs to treat rhythm disturbances is to suppress ventricular tachycardia and um, to treat symptomatic uh, premature ventricular contractions. So, and within that, what we'll talk about is a special case of uh, drugs that can be useful in myocardial ischemia and a special case of treatment of torsade de point, which is polymorphic ventricular tachycardia in the setting of a long QT interval. So these are the main indications for antiarrhythmic drug therapy. I think it's useful at this point to sort of go over uh, the broad conceptual ways atrial fibrillation can be treated, uh, rate control versus rhythm control. This, this can be a little bit tricky, but the idea is that with rhythm control, what you're trying to do is modify the atrial electrical properties to restore sinus rhythm. So basically, you're trying to change the heart rhythm around from atrial fibrillation back to normal sinus rhythm. And what that'll do is allow sort of normal conduction through the heart to occur. The other strategy is to use rate control, which is basically accepting that the atria are going to remain in fibrillation and not uh, sort of contract meaningfully, but make sure that the ventricles don't go too fast by modifying the properties of the AV node to slow it down so that the AV node doesn't conduct, let's say, at 150 or 160 beats per minute signals coming from the atria to the ventricles. Rather, it conducts at a rate of, let's say, 80 to 100 beats a minute, uh, which is sort of more compatible with normal ventricular function. So rhythm control, get sinus rhythm back, rate control, accept atrial fibrillation, but make sure the ventricular rate is okay. Those are the two main sort of strategies for treating atrial fibrillation. And this Venn diagram is just to remind us again that atrial, uh, rather, um, antiarrhythmic drug therapy is a subset of the broader uh, strategies to treat rhythm disorders. For example, treating ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia, the treatment is nearly invariably shocking with the uh, electrical uh, current. So that's indications for drug therapy. And um, what we'll do here is stop and then the next video will actually go through the specific antiarrhythmic drugs that we're going to be talking about and using in lecture.